Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm here in front of you to take the cue from what Mr. Sahi has said, that uh, everybody coal, oil, renewables, and everybody has to learn to live with each other in the kind of shape of things which are expected to be happening in this country. So the subject of my presentation is black versus green, preferred energy of the future. The present energy demand of the country, that is the energy, not the power, is oil 32%, natural gas 8%, coal 54%, nuclear 1%, and hydro 5%. Coal shall continue to be a major source of primary energy supply in times to come. Its share is likely to remain around 52%, even by 2047. So as on 2016-17, the last year, the demand of coal was about 838 million tons, against which the domestic supply was 647 million tons, necessitating imports of 190 million tons, which cost the country about 10,000 crores. Now, with a view to comply with the commitment made in COP21 and India's voluntary efforts to reduce pollution, the country is now committed to transition towards greater use of cleaner sources of energy and more of domestic coal. The government is proposing to add 175 gigawatt of renewables, which will probably come out of 100 gigawatt by way of solar, 60 gigawatt by way of wind, and 50 gigawatt by way of biomass by 2022. This is a very ambitious target, but uh, given the government's commitment, everybody is trying to work towards it, it can definitely be achieved. The government was clear that huge investments in renewables shall be made through a transparent system of reverse e-auction. Now, this led to a very pleasant discovery of substantial drop in the prices of renewables, prices of wind have gone down to nearly rupees 2.5 per kilo, kilowatt, and solar prices are expected to come down to rupees 2 per kilowatt. Now that surprisingly figures have surprised everybody, and these figures compete very well with the prices of the thermal. Now renewables are seasonal, available during certain parts of the day, this comes along with huge investments in the transmission system so that renewable power can be absorbed into the system as and when it is produced. Simultaneously, a trend of falling prices in the storage system of electricity, which would also ensure adequate developments in the storage of electricity through new generation batteries. A lot of research is being done, not only in India, but also in US and other places which expects that the price of the battery storage would also come down. So what does it mean for all of us? Up till 2027, no further investment on thermal plants are being planned. Only 50 gigawatt of power, which is a work in progress, would be completed. Perhaps, yes, there's a question mark there. However, energy demand is subsequently expected to go up from 2012 to 2047 by 2.7 to 3.2 times. By 2040, India's population is expected to rise to 1.6 billion. The share of manufacturing in the country's GDP will double from its current level to 30%. Per capita consumption of electricity is expected to increase at a CAGR of 8%. Now, in the transport sector, where the major changes which are expected to take place, there shall be a shift towards rail-based mass transport systems and electric vehicles. Electric vehicles, which everybody is talking about. Most of India's vehicles shall be powered by electricity by 2030. This would not only reduce the energy demand, but also save the exchequer USD 100 billion, about rupees 6.5 lakh crores every year, while reducing pollution level in the cities by 80 to 90 percent. 
This USD 100 billion saving is over twice India's present defense budget for 2017-18 or over 10 times the amount invested in the renewables in 2016. So how is this going to affect the working of coal mines in the future? Coal India, Singreni will jointly achieve a production of 1 billion ton as they are planning. Companies like NTPC are going to increase their investments in coal mining. NTPC has plans to produce 3 million tons by this year and then gradually scale it up to 60 million tons. CIL Coal India, Singrani shall no longer be the traditional mining companies and will gradually transform themselves also as power companies as Noveli Lignite Corporation has done. MCL is proposing to set up a 1000 megawatt power plant. WCL has been allotted three blocks in MCL command area and they would also be setting up another 1200 megawatt of power NTPC, which has so far been a power company, plans to produce 3 million tons, as I said earlier, and they'll jack it up to 60 and then to 100. So in all this scenario, what is the future of coal? Coal shall continue to be a dominant fuel for generating power for years to come. That's very clear. However, the coal mines have no right to spoil the environment by irresponsible mining. Responsible and sustainable mining has to be enforced. Washing of low-grade coal has to be made mandatory to reduce pollution load. Efficient combustion of coal through technologies, HELE, has to be used extensively for limiting the discharge of polluting gases. Inefficient and old plants have to be gradually replaced. So coming to the conclusion, coal and renewables will have to learn to live with each other, each playing its role in its own critical area. Only a successful marriage between coal, renewable, and nuclear power shall be the recipe for the future. Thank you very much.